Welcome to How To Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon. When we were in Paris last year, we visited lots of pastry shops and then there was one that we just stumbled across that I'd never heard of called Au Melveilleux du Fouet. I hope that I pronounced that correctly. It's a beautiful little boutique shop that specializes in meringues covered in creams and different toppings and they come in various sizes and we purchased one of each flavor in the smallest size so that I could taste them and well, we all tasted them, we shared them out between us and so that I could recreate them once I got home. So let me show you what's inside. Each one had two meringues with cream in the center and the toppings pressed on on the outside. So let's start by making a meringue and for that all we need is egg whites and sugar. And all the recipe quantities for this will be listed on the howtocookthat.net website for you and there's a link to that below. Whip together the sugar and the egg whites on high speed until they become thick and glossy and white and when you lift up the mixer it should hold its shape like this. Decide how big you want your meringues to be and draw some circles on some baking paper. And then what we want to do is flip the baking paper over so the circles on the underside so we don't get any of that pencil on our meringues. Pipe one tray of flat circles. If you have little spikes sticking up like this, just use a damp finger to smooth it down so they don't burn in the oven. Then on another tray, pipe domes of meringue. And you do that just by holding the bag in the middle of the circle and letting it get to the right width and then just lifting it up and keep piping to make the dome. And then just smooth down the top with a damp finger like you did before. And then we want to bake those at 100 degrees centigrade or 210 Fahrenheit for 90 minutes. While they're baking, let's make our toppings. The easiest ones to make is the chocolate, of course. You just take a block of chocolate and a potato peeler and scrape it along the side of the block and you get these beautiful chocolate shavings. And you're gonna need one bowl of dark chocolate and one bowl of white chocolate shavings. Three of the other flavors have crispy meringue on the outside. So we'll make another batch of meringue, but this time with a slightly higher sugar content so it makes a crunchier meringue. Whip it up like you did before and then pipe half of it onto baking paper in long, thin lines. We're going to chop these up, so don't worry if they don't look pretty. I'm just making them thin so they'll dry out quicker in the oven. Split the remaining meringue into two bowls and then in one cup here I have one teaspoon of coffee and I'm adding to that one tablespoon of boiling water and I'm just going to let that dissolve. And in the other cup I have some cherry juice from tinned cherries. That's three tablespoons in there and you'll want to take that and microwave it until it evaporates and boils down to only one tablespoon. So what we've done is we've concentrated the cherry flavor in there. I used all the coffee in my meringue, but if I was making it again, I'd probably use half the amount because it was a little bit strong. Mix that through, and then if the meringue is a little bit runny like mine is, just give it another whisk and it will thicken up. It won't be as thick as it would be without any added liquid, but it should be thick enough to pipe onto the baking paper in stripes, just like we did with the plain meringue. Mix in a tablespoon of the concentrated cherry juice into the other bowl of meringue and add a little bit of red food coloring if you want as well. And then pipe that out onto baking paper too. And we wanna bake all of those in the oven at 100 degrees C for about 60 minutes. At first, when you pull those out, they may seem a little soft, but if you wait about 10 seconds for them to start to cool, you'll see they'll crisp up really quickly. And then you can just break them into little pieces or you can chop them with a knife. How small you chop them is up to you. Now you wanna store these in an airtight container until you're ready to use them so they don't go soft. It looks a bit like I'm chopping veggies, but these are not at all healthy for you. <laughs> The last topping that we need to make is a crunchy nut praline. You can just buy this in some countries, but I can't seem to find it here, so I always just make my own. You put two cups of sugar and a third of a cup of water in a pan over high heat, and once it starts to boil, wash down any sugar crystals off the side of the pan using a wet pastry brush. If you don't have a pastry brush, I have used wet paper towel here before. The important thing is that there's no sugar crystals left on the side of the pan. 
While that's boiling, place some almonds on some baking paper on a tray in the oven to warm up. Keep an eye on the boiling sugar mixture and once it starts to turn golden, take the nuts out of the oven and pour about half of that over your nuts. Having the tray and nuts warm gives you about 30 seconds to mix it around and make sure that all the nuts are coated before it starts to set. Spread it out in a single layer and leave it to cool. Return the remaining caramel to the heat and add in a tablespoon of butter and half a cup of cream. The cold cream will set the caramel, but keep stirring and as that cream gets hot, that caramel will re-melt. Give it a good stir to make sure it's all mixed in and then remove it from the heat and pour it into a heat proof bowl and just leave that to cool. Peel the almond candy off the baking paper and chop that into small pieces. They used hazelnuts in Paris, but I couldn't find any hazelnuts at the shops, so I'm just going with almonds for mine. Now for the cream. I'm using 600 milliliters of cream that is 35% fat, and then adding to that 200 milliliters of double cream. Now this double cream is 56% fat. So overall that works out that my cream will end up being about 40% fat. So more creamy and less watery than normal whipped cream, which will make it slightly thicker and easier to spread on the meringue. For the assembly, take one of your flat base meringues and add some cream onto it. Add one of the domed meringues on top of that and gently squeeze it together and then spread it up and around the sides and on the top. Now for our first flavor, you just drop that into the white chocolate shavings and gently press that in on all sides. And then you just put it into a mini cupcake case to make it easy to move it around. Now do the same for the praline coated one. That one also just has a plain cream on the inside. You could sweeten the cream, but the sweetness of the meringue and the praline, it really doesn't need more sugar. If anything, you could add a little pinch of salt to your cream here to balance it out a bit. Now for the caramel one, add a dollop of that caramel onto the meringue and then add the cream and another meringue and spread it up the sides and then drop that into the plain meringue pieces and roll it around until it's covered. Moving on to our flavored creams. Add a tablespoon of cooled concentrated cherry juice to some of the cream and gently fold that through. Add the cherry cream between the two meringues and over the outside. Now it probably would have been a good idea to add some red food coloring to this cream too, but I didn't do that. That would just give you more of a sort of a pinky red overall look to it once you've rolled it in these cherry flavored meringue pieces so that all the spaces are the same color as the meringue. Just pick that up and pop it into a cupcake case. Now for the coffee cream, add a tablespoon of icing sugar and then take a quarter of a teaspoon of instant coffee and crush it into a fine powder just using the blade of a knife against the counter. Pick up that powder and place it in with the cream and then just whisk that together. Spread the coffee cream onto the two meringues just like we did for all our other flavors and then cover that in bits of coffee meringue. For the next one, flavor some cream using chocolate, spread it over the meringues, and then dip it into the dark chocolate flakes. These are the flavor combinations that they used at Au Melveilleux du Fouet, but you can of course make your own combinations. What do you think would go well with meringues? You can also make these slightly bigger to make them less fiddly, or as a large cake. If you just make three discs of meringue, put cream in between the layers and all over the outside, and then press the topping of your choice onto that. Subscribe to How To Cook That for more cakes, chocolate, and desserts. Click here for more recipes. With thanks to my patrons, and a special shout out to my gold level patrons for your amazing support. I love you guys. Make it a great week, and I'll see you on Friday.